Good morning. Good morning. morning. Welcome to King of Kings on this uh, chilly but uh, beautiful day as it's going to warm up. We're looking forward to that uh, weather change and hopefully you have uh, big plans later for today. We're excited to be gathered in God's house today. Today is the conclusion of our series on family ministry and so we're going to bring everything and Pastor Al's going to wrap it all up in a nice bow for us today. So there you go. Glad to have you with us. We have a couple of announcements and so we'll go ahead and get into those today. I'm Pastor Alan Erdman, um, and I'm going to wrap it up for you today. But I'm going to start with the connection card. Um, You've never heard this before, but the connection card is how we keep track of the congregation. So if you put your name and information on the front, but of much more importance is on the back of the card. You can list any prayer concerns you have, and the staff will pray for you. Or if you need a staff member to contact you, please list that. Today, from 9 o'clock to 12.30 in Strickert Hall, we have our ministry fair. This is an opportunity for you to learn the ministries that are going on here at King of Kings and also to maybe see if there's a way you can get more involved in uh, serving in different capacities to make those ministries go. Uh, And so it's great to know all the things that go on here, but also it's important that we know that those things don't just happen. They do require people who are willingly uh, able to step in and, and fill those roles. Because we do have our ministry fair downstairs uh, during that uh, normal 9.30 hour, we are going to have our 9.30 Bible study in the Concordia room today. For those who are involved in that family uh, ministry Bible study, it will be in Concordia room at 9.30. Uh, we also have our trunk or treat scheduled for October 26th, which is next Saturday at 4 o'clock. We still have need for more candy donations, and if anyone's interested in uh, volunteering to set up a trunk, we do have another uh, several spaces available for that, and so we would love to have uh, you come and celebrate uh, that that festive time of trunk or treat with kids from around our community. And lastly, believe it or not, Thanksgiving is coming, and we have an opportunity first to serve the congregation and the school behind us. If you would like to help support providing Thanksgiving meals, there is a uh, jar out in the lobby. If you would like a Thanksgiving meal because you're gonna be at home or you have a neighbor who (coughs) needs one, please turn their name in and we would be happy to provide that. Lastly, if you are available to drive the day before Thanksgiving, um, please leave your name out in the lobby. And we did have one more on Thursday the 24th this week. We have, uh, we're hosting that international student dinner. And so uh, there's information I believe on the Welcome Center about how you can help out with that if you're interested in serving in that way. All right, let's go ahead and get into our service today. I'll invite you to stand as we open with the singing of our hymn.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. We will utter hidden things, things from of old. We have heard and known what our fathers have told us. God commanded our forefathers to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commandments. We will not hide them from the children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children. Live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. While we strive to fix our eyes solely on Jesus, we are often distracted and fail to imitate him. We have also failed to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Aware of our sinfulness and need for forgiveness, let us confess our sins to God and seek his infinite mercy and grace. Almighty God, we have failed to imitate you and live a life of love. We have not taken every opportunity to pass along the faith to others by our word and our actions. Have mercy on us, forgive the weakness of our faith and our many sins, and restore us to fellowship with you and one another, now and forever. Amen. Now we pause for a moment of self-reflection as we confess our sins before Almighty God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God in his infinite love and mercy for you sent his son Jesus Christ into this world as an atoning sacrifice to forgive the sins of the entire world. And, and he commands us today to share that love and that forgiveness with each other. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his command, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'll invite you to turn to your neighbor and share the peace of God with them this morning. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessed inheritance that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. Move us to carefully use our words and our actions so that we might share that living faith and hope with others. 
We ask yes, this through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, our Lord, Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll invite our children to come forward for our children's message, given today by Benjamin Simmons. Parents, you can come forward with your kids if you'd like to do so. We got some great friends here with us this morning. So I brought something with me. You know what this is? Plant. It's a plant, right? What takes, what, what does a plant need to grow? What does it take for a plant to grow? Sunlight. Sunlight, water. What else? What's in here? Dirt. Dirt, right? God made dirt. Dirt don't hurt. Is that the phrase we say? <laughs> Dirt is in here. There's all sorts of things that go into a plant to make it grow. And if we want to get really detailed, we can even go more in depth. We can talk about the type of soil that's in here. We could talk about how much sun versus not enough sun, or how much water, or what type of water is filtered in. There's a lot of things that go into making a plant grow. And there's a lot of things that go into making us grow and grow into, into people, into kids, into adults, and all these things. There's a lot of things that make us grow. And I want us to think about it kind of like a plant. And I actually, I drew a very beautiful picture for us. And I want us to look at this. Can you see this? <laughs> yes, very, what is that thing? What is that? Can you tell? Okay, it's a tree. I promise, it's a tree, yeah. Um, and so we can kind of think of our life as like a tree. So I want us to think about this for a second. So if a tree has these things at the bottom, what are these? Roots. They're roots, right? What does a root do? You know. It, it, it's in two things. It Ooh. helps soak up water and it holds it in shape so it doesn't grow away. Man, you guys should be teaching this. This is great, right? Yeah, it, it helps a tree stay strong, and it helps it to grow. So when we think about our life, if we're kind of like a tree, maybe this is what God does. God, God keeps, us, keeps us firm, keeps us planted, and he helps us to, to be nurtured and to grow. And then I want us to think about this middle part. What do we call that? A stem, or if it's a tree, trunk, right? Like, not like a car, but it's a trunk. And so maybe we think about this, we can think about this like our family. Our family is kind of what makes us who we are, right? We can look at the trunk of a tree and we can tell what kind of tree it is. So maybe this is God, this is our family, and then these branches are really special parts of our, our life and of a tree because the branches stretch out and they go all over the place and they go in a lot of different directions but they actually are super important for the tree. Do you know what a branch does for a tree? Keeps the leaves on, and what do the leaves do? Pull up the tree. They get all the food for the tree, or some of the food for the tree from the sun, right? They, they take things in. And so if we're thinking about our life, maybe these branches are the relationships and the connections that we have with other people in our life. So, Maybe can you think of a couple people real fast, or a couple people in your life that you connect with? Yeah. Your mom. We can put mom on here. Oh, yeah. Do you want to put it up there and stick it on our tree? All right. Can anyone else think of other people? Ooh, yeah. You say Nana? Yeah. Come stick it on the tree here. Who else? Dad, yeah, I like that. You know what, I'll give you both one. You can put one up too, Charlotte. What about other people? Do we have maybe people at school? Do we know anyone at school that helps us grow? Friends. Friends, that's a great one. You wanna put it, I'll just put a heart for friends. I'm not gonna write the whole word out. <laughs> Anybody else, do you know? Maybe think of those other people that 
Chase. Seriously? It's a friend, Chase. Oh, Chase. Yeah, that's another friend, right? What about our teachers? Our teachers? I'll put a little teacher hat. How about that? This little teacher hat. There's a lot of things that can go on our tree that help us to grow, right? And these are really important relationships that we have. And in our gospel reading for today, Jesus talks about how the relationships we have with other people are almost as important as our family and the people that help us grow. Not only do our family, we have mom and dad and all those people, but we also have other people in our lives that help us grow and help us make us who we are. Now, do the tree, in a tree, does the trunk and the branches, do they serve the same purpose? Do they do the same thing for the tree? No. No, they're not the same, but they make a tree what it is, right? They still have a special purpose and have a thing. So that's the same thing with our relationships in our life. Now, are we always good in our relationships? Are we always nice to our friends? Are we always respectful to our teachers? Hmm, maybe not, right? Maybe we fail at that. But remember what our, our roots are? God is at the root of our tree, and He helps us to stay strong. He gives us forgiveness and teaches us how to be better about our relationships, too. So that's what we're learning about today. I think that's a really important lesson. So let's go ahead and fold our hands. Can I see your hands folded? And you can bow your heads, and you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for growing me. Help me, Help me love everyone, love everyone. In, my life. in my life. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for putting up with my tree here. You can go back to your seat. Testament reading for today is taken from Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at, at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Turn to some of our men and go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands were tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will, hear, will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 through 17. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by eating ceremonial foods, which is of no benefit to those who do so. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. A high priest carries the blood of animals into the most, high, most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside of the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good to the, and to share with others, for with such, such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, 
because they keep watch over you and as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be of no benefit to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. St. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read together. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now with the whole Christian church, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll take a moment at this time to extend our gratitude to the congregation and for our guests as well, as we have a community of faith that expresses that generosity of God after his own heart. We thank you for giving of your gifts of time, talents, and treasures, and pray that God would continue to bless you and help you to be a blessing unto others as you put to use the gifts that he has given to you. So let's join in prayer together as we go before our Heavenly Father, invite him to be generous to us as his beloved children, and ask him to increase in us a heart of service to others. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your good gifts. Continue to pour them out on us as you pour out your blessings of, of forgiveness and salvation, but also our daily bread, the time, talents, and treasures that we have. Help us not to be haughty and arrogant with those gifts, but rather to put them to use for your kingdom work, to acknowledge that you have a plan for the love of our neighbor and the honor of your holy name. Help us to be good stewards of your gifts and to put them to use according to your purposes, not our own. We pray this all in Jesus Christ. Amen.
My text for today is from John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip says to Jesus, if you show us the Father, that will be enough. So I want to start with that word enough, just to make sure we got a little grasp on that. If I say, I've had enough of you, what am I telling you? Yeah, probably the relationship's not doing too good. Now, let's suppose it's Thanksgiving, and we have just finished Thanksgiving dinner, and we push away from the table, and we say, enough. Enough. <laughs> That means I don't need to eat for 24 hours. Enough. What an interesting word. The uh, children of Israel in the Old Testament would tell you they never had enough. But we want to start back with page four of your bulletin for a minute because the final chapter in our book today is called It Takes a village. We all know that phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. But I found kind of an interesting story about that. It goes, our children need all the strong, caring, compassionate adults we can stack around their lives. But if we stop there, we stopped well short of the mark. Nobody only does a village and a child. It takes a village to care for those who grow old in our midst. It takes a village to welcome and include newcomers. It takes a village to care for the fragile and vulnerable amongst us. It takes a village to help couples find their way through the challenges of life. It takes a village to dance in our moments of joy. And the author goes on to say, by and large, I think we've forgotten this, and we're paying the price. 20 years ago, I had the greatest car. I had a Toyota Solera convertible. Yeah, and I tell you, on a day like this where it's going to be 75 degrees and sunny, there was nothing better than putting the top down on that car and going 35 miles an hour. Well, that's what I was doing one fine afternoon, and my cell phone rang, and I looked at it. It was my 12-year-old nephew calling me from Salt Lake City. And that didn't seem right. But I pulled over, took his call, and he says, Uncle Alan, I just found out my dad has cancer. And Augie started to cry. Well, I spent about 20 minutes on the phone with him. And then we kind of wrapped that up, and I called my sister and got the story. And without going over all the details, 20 years later, my brother-in-law is still with us. But it always amazed me what it took for a 12-year-old to call somebody a 1,000 miles away and say, I'm scared. That's what it means to take and build a village around our children to put mentors and teachers and pastors and adults and friends around them so that they always have somebody to talk to. I mean, mom and dad, when you get home at night and you're thinking about your kids, what's the first thing you kind of say to each other? One of the first things is, who are they running with? What kind of crowd are they involved with? And when our kids go to college, what do we tell them? Well, most of the time we say, why don't you come home and bring your friends so that we can meet them? And when a, when a couple moves 
Some of you are laughing like I'm never inviting them home again. <laughs> when you move from one city to another, what's one of the first things we say to our spouses? Have our kids found a good group of people to be with? Oh, the village is so important. And let's ask the really hard question now. Are we good enough? Here at King of Kings, is this village doing what it needs to for not only the young, the old, for the new amongst us, for any of our charter members who are left? How are we doing as a village? If you look back into the Old Testament, Book of Deuteronomy, those people would tell you they never had enough. Why, they were, in, they were slaves in Egypt. Oh, God spare us, this is such a horrible life. God spares them, takes them into the promised land. What do they say? Oh, let us go back, things weren't so bad in Egypt. And then they say we're hungry and God provides manna from heaven. And after about three weeks of the manna, they start complaining again, it's not good enough. Why don't, why don't we have a little sausage and cheese and a glass of Chardonnay to go with the man? Go over to the New Testament. Jesus preaches to 5,000 people. The disciples come up to him and say, Jesus, we don't, we don't have anything for these people to eat. All we have is this kid's lunch. You know, a couple loaves of bread and some fish. And the God of enough the God of enough feeds those people and they collect the leftovers. The God of enough. We don't hear about that God very often in this society because you ever looked at the commercials we see on TV? They're all meant to tell us that if we use certain products, we can be more than ordinary. That if you use this deodorant or if you buy these blueberries, you will be extraordinary. Let me ask you this. How many of you are just plain old ordinary Lutherans? Oh, we don't want to, oh, you want to own that? <laughs> Yeah, the God of just enough is our God, and he bestows his love and grace upon us. I got a fill in the blank question for you. I will never blank enough. And these are the messages that we hear day in and day out. I will never, how about this one? I will never be rich enough. Ever looked at your checking account and thought that? Well, how about those of us who started diets last January? I will never be skinny enough. How about I will never be smart enough? I will never be good enough. I will never be athletic enough. I'll never be good looking enough. I'll never believe enough. Do you have your, do you have anything else you want to add to my list there? Yeah, enough. We had an interesting conversation in staff meeting a couple of weeks ago about select sports teams. And I never in a million years realized how much it costs to play on a select hockey team. <laughs> oh, the voice of experience. <laughs> yeah. Not only do you have the equipment and the practice and the ice time, but you travel all over the country to play in these tournaments, and what's the message of a select team? 
you're better than these people over here. You're enough. The message of Christianity is so different. The message of Christianity is our God gives us all we need. Our God loves us. Our God cares for us. Our God forgives us. And he's enough. He is enough. Now let's go back to the village just for a minute. In the last month, we've had two massive hurricanes that have hit this country, Helene and Milton. Billions of dollars of damage. But have you noticed on the evening news that the coverage of those hurricanes gets smaller and smaller? And it gets filled up by other stories. Other things happen. How many good Lutherans, ordinary Lutherans, how many of us said, boy, I should do something about that? I should help those people in my village. And then it just kind of, the world moves on. Happens to me every so often. The world just moves on. I want you to do this today. Take your bulletin home. Don't read it now. You've got to listen to me right now. <laughs> Take that bulletin home and notice how many things are happening in this village that we call King of Kings to build lives. You heard Pastor Scott and I talk about a couple of them in the opening announcements. Thanksgiving dinners. Who do we know that's hungry? Maybe we want to sponsor a dinner. Maybe we want to drive. Oh, a little bored? Why don't you go to Uganda next summer? We're sending another team there. The youth group, Ben, are going to the National Youth Gathering this summer. Oh, don't, Halloween's coming. Come be a part of Trunk or Treat and tell people about why we believe in Jesus Christ here. And then give them a handful of candy. All kinds of ways that we try to build the village. Because there's a great lie great lie going around, and the lie is, it's okay to be disconnected. It's okay to be disconnected from my family, from my church, from my community. All I need is my cell phone and my internet service. And it's not enough. It's not enough. Well, I got one story and then we're done for today. Oh, you're not going to clap? Darn. <laughs> okay, here it goes. There was a daughter and her father at the airport, and they were obviously saying goodbye to each other. And the daughter says, Daddy, I wish you enough. And the father hangs on to her, and in a minute he says, Dear, I wish you enough also. And they just hug each other for a second, and then the daughter turns around, walks down the jetway, and is gone. The father's just standing there. And for some reason, he just turns to an absolute stranger standing next to him. And he says, have you ever had to do a final goodbye with someone? And the guy next to him is kind of stunned. But he goes on and he says, I just said goodbye to my daughter. I won't see her again. She lives a long way away and won't be coming back until my funeral because I'm terminally ill. 
And the guy next to him just kind of looks at him and says, well, I, I heard you say to your daughter, I wish you enough. And the man says, it's an old family tradition. We would always say to each other, I wish you enough, because it meant I wish you enough of God's love, of his presence, of his power, of his peace, to keep you, sustain you, and hold you. And then he said there's actually a little more to the blessing. I wish you enough sunshine that your life may be filled with light. But I wish you enough rain that you appreciate the sun. I wish you enough happiness that your heart can overflow. I wish you enough peace that you may build lives with other people. But most of all, I wish you enough hellos that you can get through the final goodbye. And then he turned around, walked about five paces away from this man, and turns around and says, I wish you enough. So this morning, I wish you enough. I wish you enough of everything in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting. Amen. We rise to sing. <laughs> congregation may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, about three weeks ago, the district president of the Missouri district asked if pastors across our state would take a moment and talk about something that's coming up that's important. And I'm talking about the election. As our Lutheran theology tells us, we live in two kingdoms the kingdom of the left and the kingdom of the right. The kingdom of the left is the kingdom of the world 
The kingdom of the right is the kingdom of God's church. God created both kingdoms. God rules in both kingdoms. And we live in both kingdoms. God's word, our catechism, both tell us explicitly how we are to live in these kingdoms. Whether we're part of a family, as a husband and wife or a child, as we are active in church, whether we're pastors or listeners, congregational members, or whether we're living and serving under the rule of the left-handed kingdom. encouraged us to encourage you to be active in so many different ways. We can pray for our government in the left hand of the kingdom. We can be informed what is on the ballots. We can go out and vote. All of these things are important. One of the things that they specifically encouraged us, he encouraged us to talk about is amendment number three. It's coming up on our ballot. It is a proposed amendment change to our state's constitution, which is a big deal. Our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod has always taken a stand on the sanctity of life. We're reminded of the passage of scripture that tells us in Proverbs 31, verses eight and nine, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Over the years, our church body has put into place a number of official resolutions in our church that talks about the sanctity of life. And we believe that the Bible clearly states that a child in a mother's womb is a human being. And so today, again, to look a little bit more, more closely at Amendment 3, if it passes, this is what it means. It means it will legalize abortion, adding it to our state's constitution, guaranteeing abortion for almost any circumstance. Second, it will mandate access to an abortion through all nine months of pregnancy even late-term abortions. Third, it will guarantee the right to an abortion even to minors without parental consent. Four, it will repeal all relevant existing protections for women and children and prevent future ones from being put in place if it's part of the Constitution. And fifth, it will give public approval and perhaps even government funding to abortions statewide for almost any reason. And so I ask you as we come closer to this next election that you would exercise your rights as being in a citizen of the left-handed kingdom. That you would first and foremost pray for our elected leaders. My hope is that you will be informed on the different amendments that you are voting for. That you will speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. I pray that you will be active in demonstrating your love and your mercy, the love and mercy of Christ to those around us, especially those in need, especially to mothers and children, children both before they're born and after they're born. And I pray you God's blessings as you carry out this sacred responsibility, as you serve in, serve as members of two kingdoms in this world, the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God. God's peace be with you as you take your stance in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. If you would at this time, we'll continue with the prayers of the church.
Let us now come to the Lord in prayer. Our Savior Jesus Christ, we humbly ask that you comfort and heal the sick, Barbara, Lisa, Lauren, Colleen, Cheryl, Bill, Pam, Sue, Karen, Susan, Amanda, Pam, Annie, Roy, Deb, Edie, Linda, and our homebound members, as well as all church and family members not mentioned here, who are in need of physical and spiritual healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our dear Lord, we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the wedding anniversaries of John and Becky Helvey and Todd and Angela Safright, both 30 years of marriage on October 22nd. We pray for blessings for our seminarians, Daniel and Elise Christensen, Isaac and Alyssa Conrad and Noah and Anna Pieper. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus, we pray that you would guide and protect those serving our country and community as elected office officials, military service, healthcare workers, and first responders. Today, as we approach the November general election, we ask that your will be done in the election of our government leaders. We ask that those serving in our government would respect all life, including the unborn, and seek your will and justice in all of their decisions. We ask for your guidance as we vote on many issues in Missouri that impact our society. We ask that you grant each of us guidance as we seek to protect the less fortunate, the unborn, mothers, and families. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we pray that you would bring peace to this world and end the wars in the Ukraine and the Middle East. Comfort those who are providing relief to the victims of the war. We humbly ask that you strengthen and protect Christians throughout the world that are subject to persecution. We pray for your blessings on our sister congregation in the Ellisville Circuit of the LCMS, New Beginnings in Eureka, and Pastor Joe Sullivan. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we pray that you would strengthen and protect our missionaries, Kip and Ivy, the Connect to Uganda Ministry, the International Student Ministry of St. Louis, and the Jonah Inheritance Ministry to Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, As you go this day, go with the blessing of our Lord. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.